There are many, many trials of people who stormed the Capitol on January 6, people who are not politically famous as part of the grinding wheels of justice. And sometimes some of these trials, which do take time, bring out new evidence and videos, even beyond all the journalists who were there and the January 6 committee. So tonight we have brand new video, new to the world, from inside the Capitol during one of the tensest moments of the Jan 6 attack, as it unfolded before the rioters and seditionists, now convicted some of them, were able to actually take control. Let's put this up. This is new video, and what you're seeing here is from this key moment from before they took control of the House floor. So the House chamber's barricaded. This cell phone footage is actually from one of the people who stormed the Capitol. This is the video evidence used to now convict people they told on themselves. They were, I guess, so arrogant or just so out of it that they thought making this video was a good idea. But the perspective you see here is quite chilling. This is the Jan 6 attacker looking through broken glass. Capitol security have their guns drawn. They're still trying to hold off however many people were on the other side, which the police, of course, didn't exactly know at that point. They didn't know that the floor was eventually going to be ransacked. Now, you have two Republican representatives who are actually on the other side of this door. And this video evidence, new to the world, which was used in the trial to convict this person, now is what we're going to show you as news tonight. The rioters shouting threats. We're real American citizens who are sick of this. And we're making it known that we're sick of it. There's going to be a bigger civil war and a lot of blood. I drove 14 hours to get here and stood in the cold for three and a half hours to find out that Mike Pence is a traitor, man. No, no. And I voted for that dude. He could have done the right thing and certified those uh, legislators, electors, and we wouldn't be standing here with a nine millimeter pointed at me right now. We got to hang a bunch of crooked congressmen. We'll do that. That's, of course, those individuals yelling. This footage came out, as mentioned, in the case. Now, this is the lengths the rioters would go. You remember all of the imagery. You remember the noose. You remember the gallows. You remember, of course, the terrible attacks, the marching through the halls of Congress. But video like this, the reason why it was reported in the trial, is it helps show how this actually went down, how these people were still shouting these threats in the face of guns, how serious it was. The gallows was not some sort of symbol. And then there's the moment where a congressperson, Troy Nels, a Republican, speaks back to those attackers. I've been in law enforcement in Texas for 30 years. Talk I've a little louder. That's because you've never seen corruption like we have seen this last month. I'm ashamed. And I'm ashamed of my Congress people. They don't even stand up for it. You need to back up. Freedom is at hand. You can just feel that moment. This is really striking. And remember, one of the biases or sort of intellectual barriers of history and types of journalism when we tell you about stuff from three, four years ago is we know how it ended. So, for example, we know that member of Congress was not attacked or killed that day. We know Mike Pence got out safe. But think about the wherewithal of the, the member of Congress, for example, is unarmed. The police are there, the Capitol Police, but they're vastly outnumbered. They don't know what's coming next. And he still stood his ground for however long there to speak back to these people who he understood were on his side. He said, I am ashamed because he understood these were Trump fans and they all had agreed on Trump. But when Trump lost, some of them now became seditionists. That was a moment in time for the Republican Party, that individual standing there in that moment and other Republicans who initially spoke out quite clearly after Jan 6th. We will not bow to lawlessness or intimidation. All I can say is uh, count me out. Enough is enough. Last week's violent attack on the Capitol was undemocratic, un-American and criminal. President Trump is practically and morally responsible for provoking the events of the day. I am going to stay right here uh, with my brothers and sisters in blue. I cannot support what you're doing. This is, this is criminal. That was then. Now, Republican leaders, including the new Republican House Speaker, the top member of that body, are continuing to feed new lies about the 2020 election, which is what got all those people so hopped up storming the place, or take Republican Stefanik, who will not commit to certifying a future election and called those 
incarcerated individuals from Jan 6 now, quote, hostages. That's messaging she got from Trump, who also now is under fire for declining to sign a basic pledge in Illinois to get on the ballot where you say you won't support overthrowing the government. And then there's this cover out today from The New Yorker magazine. This is political art and commentary. It is in its own way controversial when you make historical comparisons. And there it is. Judge for yourself what we may be heading towards.